were born before the wind Also younger than the sun Hi everyone You're listening to Say What? On Haggy Shack Radio Simulcast to Wolf Spirit Radio And I am Colleen Kelly And my co-host is Nancy L. Hopkins And on Say What? We'll be discussing topics of the day, things of interest to Nancy and I, and also things of interest to our listeners who may have asked us some questions. And we'll also be discussing what we just heard on Dilly Dallying in Dolly World. And now, on with the show. Already, we are live. Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody out there, hello, hello, hello. This is the Say What Show. Colleen Kelly and Nancy Hopkins, that's me. And we are on uh, November 5th, already November 5th, 2016. And we have on with us Debrielle and Jean Rockefeller. Now, the last month, um, I believe, was when they were on before, again, this is like a repeat thing. Well, an encore, let's say. Um, simply because we had such a great show and we really had fun. And our motto here is if we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. So I'm going to start with Colleen. Colleen, um, how are you doing? I see your, your granddaughter did just really, it was a nice show. Thank you. I hope she enjoyed it. I think she did. I haven't really had a chance to talk with her about it. I think she did. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's hard to imagine, you know, never having seen anything. And I thought the dolly presented a lot of really informative information um, that most of us wouldn't have thought about, probably, unless you've been around somebody that has eye problems. Mm-hmm. Which, as we get older, it's like Dolly said, you know, you start to, and then you start to really... I had to go to the eye doctor just because I go every three months, just because <laughs> I'd rather, you know, stay on top of that. <laughs> I don't go to regular doctors, but the eye doctor I go to. Um, and so it was a nice show, and thank her for us. And we will have to get her on here. And Debrielle is our normal first of the month uh, co-host. So, Deb, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm good. I woke up late. I'm kind of groggy today, but I'm here, and I'm not too altered. So all is well. How are you all? Well, I'm doing good. And Jean, you doing all right? What's happening with you? Well, I'm I'm having a red letter day, actually, Nancy. I got me a new computer today, a new phone, and my son moved out. Woohoo! Wow! <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. I know. Uh, I hope it was a good uh, moving, and it was it wasn't under duress. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, 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 not at all, not at all. He decided to he decided it was time to move out. I told him he's not allowed back, but I was only kidding. (laughs) Are you an empty nester now, or do you still have more kids at home? Um, Well, I've one. I've one that's still in college. Oh, okay. So, so technically, no. But sort of. Does he? They live at college, or they live with you? No, she she goes to West Virginia. She lives there. She. Oh, okay. So you're kind of a pre-empty nester. Uh, Yeah, kind of. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. You don't seem very ever. stressed. You don't seem stressed about it. <laughs> no, I've been waiting for it for 26 years. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So, um, a red letter day. I love that. What, 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 do you feel like you've been liberated, Jane? I mean, is it like oh now? My you, gosh, I, yeah. Yeah. Even though he was, he was a, a, essentially an adult. He was still in your life, and you and you have to think about him. You know, it's like once they move out, if they get home late, you don't know it, so you don't worry. <laughs> right. Yeah, and he's noisy. Ah. Uh-huh. He, he um he's a musician, so you know he thinks that playing his guitar at eleven o'clock at night is just fine with the amp cranked up as high as it can go. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I now know why you said, hey, have a good time. Be gone. <laughs> my oh. dad 
forward to empty nest for so long, always told us, I can't wait till you're all gone. I had two brothers that were also noisy. Of course, I probably was too. And then he loved it. But after a while, it did. He was like, it's so quiet here. But I'm sure they're really adjusted well. <laughs> so that's good. You've got enough going on. So that'll be nice to have it back to just the two of you. Yeah. Well, the biggest the biggest adjustment is um, food. I'm buying too much food, yeah, because I have one less, you know, his girlfriend's not here, she comes over and, um, you know, I make dinner every night, now I really don't have to do that, so I have a refrigerator full of food. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to adjust what I what I do. My husband, if he keeps telling me, remember, there's just two of us now. <laughs> oh, that's great. Imagine my mother and father when 10 of them were out of the house. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I, I'm not sure, but I think they locked the door. <laughs> yeah. I, I had this sneaky suspicion they only opened it up on special occasions. Oh, my gosh. I you can't know. imagine. Me they either. probably thought it was never going to happen. Right. <laughs> and they're like, wow, look at all this money we have since we're not buying all those groceries. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, they never, they never got into... Um, the grandchildren either um because oh, i don't know why it was it was like they were just over it you know <laughs> the well, young, after 10 kids, you're out of gas you're out of kid gas you, yeah. you don't have any you don't have any left in the tank <laughs> well they definitely st- steal energy from adults that's there seems to be their goal in life you know <laughs> you ever you ever been around at christmas time and and the adults are like you know, just blasted. They, they they just want to go to sleep, and the kids are still running around like crazy. Well, I'm sitting there one night, and I said, "What is it with these kids? Where do they get this energy?" And the father said, "They steal it from us." <laughs> well, you know, I used to work in a I used to work in a dental pedo practice, oh. and um, I'll tell you what when I when I got home, I had more energy than when I got there in the morning. Wow! So there, there was an incredible amount of. Um, yeah, it was a fun place to work, and the kids just brought a lot of great energy. It was a really, really, um, it was a wonderful experience, actually. What kind of a job was this? It was a, it was in a pediatric dental office. And they, they brought in good energy to a dental office? Oh, my God, yeah. They were <laughs> so excited. About going to the dentist? Absolutely. Wow. It was a fun place. There were video games in the in the waiting room. It was just it everything was geared towards kids and it was so much fun. Oh, they should do that for adults. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they didn't they go to serve the like Jack Daniels and vodka or something <laughs> an open bar. That would work. <laughs> they obviously didn't go to the dentist that we went to. No. Everybody no. in the, there was no, only no. one dentist in the whole area, you know, so everybody went to the same dentist. And uh, one day my brother said to me, I don't want to go to that dentist again. And I said, well, I don't either. But what's your specific reason? He says, he always uses the same needle. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> well, you know, in a kid's mind, he's always seeing this big, huge, and they weren't little needles like we see now. These things were big. And he was convinced that he used the, the, the same needle and that it had to be dull by now. That was his whole, <laughs> because those shots hurt. You know, they did. They hurt. And, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, but they didn't care then either. They, they just, you know, the, the dentist yeah, yeah. didn't care. Now they Now they have a... Um, a sense of compassion because it's it's very competitive. There's a lot of dentists out there. It's not like just one dentist on on in one town. Now right. it's you know there's 50, so they're all competing. Well, this is a very good thing. Yeah. See, you see that one of the problems we had is that my mother and father, this dentist, and as a matter of fact, the the doctor too, were um, friends of theirs, and so. My brothers and sisters and I grew up not thinking that doctors and dentists were somebody special. They were friends of my mother's and father's. And I, I hate to say this, but they also, when they came over, they were partying. 
So we only saw them drunk, except when we went to their <laughs> offices. Oh you know, so when people would talk about, oh, doctors and dentists being special, I'm going like, not in my town, honey. <laughs> They're drunks, because that's the only, you know, that's what we saw. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. That is real. yeah, I've heard some stories from people that are, you know, in their 50s, 60s, 70s from um, what what the uh, the dentist was like when they were kids and how different it is now. Well, you're, you're right. It's got to be the, well, and plus the fact that they're not using the same needle. Right, exactly. <laughs> what, one of my patients told me that they're, um, they grew up out, out near Pittsburgh and their dentist smoked, so he'd have a he had one of those standing ashtrays right next to the chair, and he'd have a cigarette. He had the smell the whole time. He worked on you. Can you imagine? Oh my God! No. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> oh my God! She told me I thought I was gonna die. I just like you know because I I got a visual in my head about that, and I just oh my gosh. It's. <laughs> Just an amazing visual. I can't even imagine what that would have been like when you know if you were a kid. Like a B movie. <laughs> <laughs> that Ooh. is funny. But you know that that's if you look if you just look at life the the, the life that we see and the kids are in, into now that was not anything we knew. I mean th- their life their reality is is already so different than ours. Uh, when when I was growing up, and apparently I'm like 68. I thought I was 69. <laughs> well, you know what happens because again, you know, it's, it's it's the revolution around the sun, and so when you're you're one years old, you've gone around the sun once, and so when I turned, I was turning 59. We had a party here, and my better friend says, "Well, you know, you're you're about to do the 60th journey around the sun," and I said, "What the hell are you talking about?" And he reminds me that I started out one. I was already around it once. And so I'm actually into my 60th year. So I went from 58 to 60. And I never saw 59 because all I could get in my head was 60. Oh you know? So the paybacks are hell because when he turned 60, I reminded him of the same thing. And he said, oh, I know what you feel like. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, crossing those decades is uh, is a very strange it, you know, it does something to you, you know. It, it's, it's a threshold. It's a big yeah. threshold. You just yeah. crossed 50, right, Jean? I'm 52, yeah. Oh, you did it a while ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, yeah. I mean, I always thought that I would, would never make 35, and then it was like I'd never make 45, and now I'm afraid I'm going to make 95. <laughs> <laughs> what is this all about? Yeah, I got the I got the best best present in the world when I turned fifty. I, I woke up and I was gonna I grabbed a cup of coffee and I was gonna go out in the back porch and I opened the door and there's there's two dead mice on the on the mat oh. there and oh. Murphy came running over and I I was ready to yell oh, at her. Yeah, Murphy it. Murphy's a cat. Murphy's a cat. <laughs> Murphy Lee, yeah. And I was ready to scream at her for you know murdering these these poor mice and she looked at me and she said, I, I happy birthday and I gave oh. you two mice. Oh. One, one I prepared so you know what parts to remove before you eat it, and the other one I left for you to prepare. Oh. And I thought, oh my God, my cat thinks I'm a complete idiot, you know? <laughs> so that was, a, that was probably, I don't think I'll ever forget that. That was a memorable experience. Cool. Now, just for people that may not know, Jean Jean does talk to animals, and, and <laughs> I mean, this is a real thing. She, these are all real conversations. I've known her for years, and she's never missed. But, the thing of it was that when she said this to me, you know, she was like, now my 50th birthday, I don't remember what anybody else gave me, but I remember what Murphy Lee gave me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> was like, right. And that's how I heard the story for the first time. You know, it was like, oh, my God. I probably could have gotten a brand new, you know, Mercedes or something, and I wouldn't remember it, but I remember those two mice. Oh. And she also, didn't she tell you it was because you, you brought stuff home, but you never prepared it? Yeah, obviously I don't know how to hunt because I go to the store and I, I bring stuff home and it's already prepared. So she she just didn't think that I knew how to prepare food. And did you? Would you? I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, she probably, she, well, at least we know where to call, who to call if we ever need to have to. Yeah, to what call. parts to remove. Just ask Murphy Lee. <laughs> Oh, I'd ask you. You didn't you didn't you study it? I mean, I hope. Oh, well, it was beheaded and disemboweled. I mean, that's that's about it. That's <laughs> the most important part. Oh 
Oh my god. Just like our kids, they watch everything we do, even when we don't realize it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was very. That was a very enlightening moment. So I, I got a lot of. Um, even though it was the two mice, there was an awful lot of wisdom contained in yeah. that. In, in that. Um, that moment, and also um, a very big perspective from my from my cat's point of view. Yeah. Well, you know, I have to, I have to, uh, I'm kind of here sitting here chuckling because during Dolly's show, a friend of mine who I knew, met back in 1972, called me and, and we've talked over the years. We haven't seen each other in probably, I don't know, probably 25 years. And uh, I, I told him, I said, look, I got two of the best psychics in the world. They're very connected people on a radio show. I said, I really think you should listen to it. And all, and now we've told him uh, about mice. And how cats. <laughs> <laughs> this is not exactly the way I thought the show was going to go. <laughs> hey, but we're having fun, and that's our motto. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> oh golly, golly, golly! But um, it, you know, that, that's the. It, it's actually a great introduction from for what's been happening with me. And um, I'm just going to briefly tell you what I think is happening. The last time we were on, we all agreed that there had been a tremendous shift in energy. Um, I had um, been contacted by the Jinn and told that the Jinn family and the nature spirits and the trees and everything, that was our army, meaning the human being. This is your army. And, um, Gene, you had that weird thing with the x-rays where the x-rays were upside down and the guy's mouth was really in bad yeah and the mason jar the mason jar the ma- yeah when i oh yes, I, yes 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 the mason jar um she had filled the mason jar and then went to get something out of it a couple hours later on a trip and it was empty and it wasn't in the car there wasn't any water it was just empty right yeah and, it's no yeah, way it could have but, spilled Right, and when you were looking at the um, the X-rays, the you were concerned, so concerned about this man's mouth, and you didn't know how to tell him. Right, and then, and then you said you went through some kind of a something happened, and you, you know, like you felt like you went through an energy change or even a timeline change, or I don't think you really were specific as to what it was, but you, something changed, and when you looked at the X-rays, now they're right side up. And right. there was no indication of any disease in his mouth. Right, exactly. And Deb, we we were talking about um, a lot of synchronicities that, well, a lot of things that most of us were feeling at the time. And so the final decision that we made there was that we had gone through some kind of a an energy change, a huge energy yep. change yep. that was was very palatable. And then no sooner did we have that particular wonderful um session we get hit with uh hurricane matthew oh yes that's right i mean i'm going like wait a minute wait a minute we're supposed to be in all this wonderful you know uh time we 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 all feeling good about this you know we're agreeing that this is and it was like i start to get bothered by this storm because i'm down here in south florida so they all start talking about it and I start to look at it, and I'm going, but it's not making any sense. I've been watching these things for, for decades, and it, it had gotten very, very strong in an area where it shouldn't. There was a lot of shear, meaning the top of the storm was being Not sure. only it got strong, Nancy, but it got strong in a very short period of time. It was, you know, within, was it 12 hours or something no, like that? No, it was 36 it, hours. Oh, it, was 30, it went from like a 1 to a 4? A five. A five. It, was a five. It, it, it went up to a five and then settled down to a four, yes. And, and it was something nobody had ever seen before. And then it threaded its way, you know, through. the. It, it, in most cases, the trajectory it should have taken, it should have beat it up pretty good in the in the Cuban mountains. And then it didn't. It, it just sort of made this little twist and turn and went through the channel. So it was still, you know... Perkin, and it was again everybody kind of shaking their heads. So I've learned over the first one that that taught me was David. That was way back in the 70s, and you, that a human being can actually turn a storm, and many human beings can 
really influence the weather. We've seen it down here with these storms, and I've talked about it before. But back to Matthew, I reached out and touched the storm, and it felt very much like Andrew had. And Andrew had felt like not like any storm I had ever met before. It was more like a spirit in the shape of a form, a storm. It was um, almost masquerading or shape shifting into a storm. But there was a sentience and, a, and an energy in Andrew, and there was in this Matthew too. And so I realized that as I was told about Andrew, don't even try to mess with this. This is something that needs to be done, and you know you don't have any control over it. So I kind of um, backed off of it and was just watching it. And what happened was that Walt did a uh, shamanic, uh, well, he was using the pendulum and he was asking about the storm. Because the first thing I, I checked was, do I feel any human uh, fingerprints on it? Is this some kind of a, um, a harp event? And I didn't feel any of that. I was in the storm, and it felt um, there was a lot of Gaia energy. And I went, okay, so Gaia seems to be the one in charge of this storm. And I was like, what are you trying to do? And because any question you ask will get answered. I suddenly found myself not where the storm was, which was in the south, but I was up in the north Florida area, and I was very high up. And I'm looking down. That's where I know basically where I was. I could see the state. And then all of a sudden, I'm like right on top of the water, maybe 200 feet in the air, looking down, and I'm looking at the Gulf Stream. And the Gulf Stream is a is a river that is running from the south to the north, and it changes color. You can see it's a, more green in this area. Uh, the waves are all different. You can see it. You can visually see it. And I got the information that this storm was designed to shake the Gulf Stream up. And so, to me, it was like, okay, you know, I understand this. And then I watched that storm do things like it was 30, well, it, right as it was supposed to hit us. And based on the, the trajectory that had not moved in, you know, 24 hours, we would have gotten a uh, hurricane wind here on my property. It just jumped 30 miles to the east and missed us completely. And then it went up and it turned up everything and, 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 you know, then it, instead of doing what we, what it looked like it was going to do was to kind of like turn around and come back at the state, it continued up into, um, the Savannah area. And last week we were talking to Christia Cummings and she was telling us how the storm had moved out all of this terrible energy that had been in the Savannah area. And she was just so grateful for the storm, even though there was flooding. Um, and, and a lot of trees were uprooted, but she felt like the trees were holding the energy. And they were just, it was all changing. It was a very, very interesting uh, show to hear. So we're, we're having these really kind of like synchronistic, the story, it's like a story that keeps getting told. And one of the things that, I was really into, if you remember, was the water. It was like the, the water had um, had taken on an importance that I had not uh, obser observed or acknowledged prior to that, that we can actually make changes a lot easier if we're working with the water and programming the water. And I, then I got this um, other link to a, um, it was about an hour's uh, discussion uh, by a host that I can't remember her name, with this woman who is the was the assistant for Dr. Emoto. And when he died, she sort of took over the operations. And it was really, really interesting talking to her, uh, talking to her, listening to her. Because first off, the in the in the case of the water, because for those that don't know, which I I, I hardly even imagine now nowadays, Dr. Emoto proved that you can program water either negatively or positively based on your thoughts, based on music, based on energy. It's just frequency. But the water will pick up this stuff, and they were able to prove this by photographic work when they would take uh, ice, and just as it's melting, they would take a picture of it, 
and you were in, in good water, in pure, pristine water, you get these wonderful crystals. In bad water, it wouldn't even make crystals. They were like gunks, like putrid things. They also, and I, did, I had not heard this. I may have heard it and just didn't stick with me. But they were able to do the same thing with tap water. They tested it. Bad tap water. And then people would put their good intentions in, in their own homes. And then they were getting the crystals out of the tap water. So she said that the number one um, thing that would reprogram water from being distressed into being able to create these crystals was the uh, emotions of love and gratitude. And to push love and gratitude, to, to think about your water and put that out, love and gratitude. Um the other thing that was happening was my, uh, it, it, I'm reading the collective, understand, I'm trying to read the collective. It's When I start to, to, to get something, a subject, or I start to follow it, it's because that's what's trending in the collective. I, I know this, because I just go with the flow, and then I find out that, you know, everybody on Wolf Spirit had done a similar show. None of us had talked to each other, and we don't even listen to each other. But we all got on the same message. So... At that time, it was on good and evil. And I just felt that when we were in the Garden of Eden, and and this is all a story that is based on, well, it's based on a true story. And the way that you hear it differs depending on who's telling the story or what religion or what society is telling the story. But it comes back to the fact that Lucifer, the devil, the snake in the garden, said to Eve, take from the tree of knowledge. She said, no, God said, no. Oh, yeah, but that's because God knows that if you take from the tree of knowledge, you will know the difference between good and evil and therefore be like God's. And so then God finds out, you know, they've messed with the tree of knowledge. And so they, they're sent outside of Eden, of the Garden of Eden, in order to experience the tree of life or the book of life. What I want you guys to tell me is where you think we are in that book. Because there's a lot of very, very strange things happening. Um, the Lulu story, Deb, um, I don't know if you saw the last installment. And Gene, I bet you don't even know about it. Uh, but when this friend of mine called me, he suddenly said to me, what do you think about this concept that we're in a matrix, but it's a matrix that is sort of like a computer program? <laughs> so even somebody who's not on top of all of this is hearing this. And I feel like the there is something happening at the collective level that is not only attempting to, but maybe effectively distracting people from the path of good back into a path of not necessarily evil but one of I just don't know anymore into the concept of you know being in the middle of the road and like you know I don't know which way to go now that's what I'm feeling and I'm just sort of wondering if you're feeling it Gene because Deb just hung up on us <laughs> Colleen oh is she back okay Deb are you back Am I back? You're here. I hear I you. I can hear you, Nancy. I'm here, too. Okay. Is yeah, Deb here? I'm here. I, I was... I, I'm back. I'm having trouble breaking up. It must be my internet. I'm going to switch to the phone. Okay. We'll wait for your call, then. Okay, Jean, you're up, then. If you've been feeling... If you Does this, any of this sound familiar to you, or what have you been feeling? Well, you know, it's not it, it's not as though we're on one path, one linear path at a time. We're on multiple, you know, we can exist multiple um, in multiple places simultaneously. So we may be experiencing, um, you know, like with the x-rays. So I, I may have been on, you know, one linear path and then boom, I changed to another one and then boom, I changed back when I when they when the x-rays were went back to normal. So, you know, it could be that we're, we're kind of phasing in and out of, of different timelines. And I, I think that's where, um, our thoughts really come in and we need to be, 
mindful of what we're thinking about because I think that now more than ever we have the ability to affect change in our reality more than we ever have in the past. So if we if we think about certain things, think about what we want, keep our thoughts high high frequency, I think that 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 affords us the ability to really be able to co-create our our reality. Let me ask you, do you think that it's um that we're one entity and we end up jumping timelines or do you think there's multiple versions of ourselves that we become aware of because we focus on them? Do you understand that? Yeah, I don't, you know, it, it's hard for me to think about myself being, you know, multiple, multidimensional because I'm, I'm just this one person in this, in this body, in this space, in this here, in this now. So to think about, um, contacting myself or, um, being able to become aware of myself in other places, it, it's just, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around. I'm not necessarily, I'm not sure it's a necessary thing to do, but because that's part of the, the questioning process right now, um, that I'm seeing out there is that, um, people aren't sure if they're one, you know, contained entity that is suddenly aware of timelines. But if that's so, the timelines have to be simultaneously existing. So is there versions of ourselves that we just sort of focus in on? You know, instead of, of watching Channel 7, you're watching Channel 10. But they're playing the same program, just with slightly different changes to it. Um, again, it, it might not be important. It may be just something that, you know, they, they're talking about. But um, it is something that's coming up. So that's why I, I wondered, did you get that, Deb? I mean, do you, do you have you gotten caught up on the story? I'm back, yeah. I I. I... Pretty much, I missed the tail end in between there, but um, yeah, we're. De- I know since I was young, like my mom used to say, "You need to be in reality. You need to be in reality." And and I was like, "Whose reality? What reality?" Like I've always been aware, but I don't know, like Jean, if it's any different than me. I've just been aware of a lot more going on than a lot of people around me. So you sort of acknowledge different realities existing? I guess. I don't even know if it's different realities. It's just like I, I was far more interested in what we couldn't physically see because I, I don't even know how to explain it. I just knew there was a lot more happening here than most of us are aware of. But you also, and, uh, I think you've said this to me that you, you you didn't really feel this was home. You feel like there's a draw someplace else. Is that? I, I didn't when I was younger, and I constantly felt better. What I would call out of body, and around my thirties, I had a friend and I used to argue a lot. Well, debate because there was some book that came out that was talking about these famous people that would die at 27 and they were big energies and they came in and left. And he was talking about how they, they couldn't really ground a lot of their soul or essence of them into their physical body and they would come and then go. And so we used to have these debates and I would disagree because I was so much more comfortable out. And then I met this one gentleman from France. It was a big, long story. Anyway, I made the decision to, okay, if I'm going to be effective on this plane where where I seem to physically, whatever physical is, be right now, I'm going to make peace with it or do my best, and I'm going to ground my energy in and be here now and quit being always out of body, even though I was always aware of everything that was going on. And I did much better since then. So I'm not, I don't feel as foreign here now. (laughs) So I'm home wherever I am is basically how I feel now. My home is in me. In my, I don't know how to explain it. I I think you made a really good point. It's, it's, you know, we're, it's, People don't get that it's like a really big deal and a really big honor to be here at this time. I mean, we're going to, we're able to 
we're, we're able to actually see the changes and witness the changes that are happening, but we're also actively participating in those changes. And yep. it, it's about being in the present, being in the here and now. And, um, it, you know, it's hard because we have jobs and we have to pay our mortgage and we have to do the laundry and we have to do this. And we have to get our kids here and there. And it's really hard sometimes depending on where you are in your in your life circumstance to really focus on the present and be mindful in the here and now when you have a lot of other things going on but even if you can just do it a, a few times a day just just stop what you're doing and and look at the clock and and acknowledge what time it is and just draw your energy into the into the here and now and it it it, it can be a very powerful experience especially if you're walking outside or you know, you just have a moment to just feel the sun and feel the trees and feel the, the wind and, and listen to the birds and just it, it really gives you a sense of, of peace. And then but also joy and appreciation that you're here and now and you're and you're appreciating the here and now in the in the moment. It, it can be a, a wonderful, engaging and um, energizing experience. And you know, Nancy, how you said, I totally agree, Jean, and you know how you said the Emoto interview was about love and gratitude into the water. Well, guess what? Love and gratitude in into who we are, what's going on, even when it's uncomfortable, and that's always the test. That's always the most difficult. But I totally agree with Jean, and I feel it's an honor. I, I don't always think. It's the most fun here, but sometimes it is. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the experience. I always have known I came to experience. I came to experience. That's it. Whatever this is, I'm experiencing. And so I'm just trying to be grateful even when I'm crying my eyes out or, you know, and even when I'm joyful. It's the experience. It is an honor. I, I It's weird. It's whatever it is. <laughs> so carrying that vibration really helps. And and I know, I guess that's why I haven't got wrapped up in the ET stuff a lot, because I don't know. That's all fine. It all could be even the inner earth. I'm really fascinated with that and the dimensions. But all I know, even though there's so much going on around us, so much, and and I can feel a lot of it. I don't even understand everything that's always happening or what I'm feeling. But all I know is right now I'm in a little cottage on this seeming earth plane with a lot of interesting people and a lot of beauty around me. And it's, I just, it's good, even when it looks bad. And may, like I always say, I'm probably just Pollyanna. But that's truly the feeling I have. And now I was always looking for where to live, what to do, everything in the future. And now I'm kind of like, you know what? You are where you are. And I'm here and home's here in my heart, wherever I go. And I I'm just keep trying to bring myself back in the now because I used to be very future orientated cause I, and, and otherworldly orientated because I wanted to get away from here because I didn't see the beauty in it. That's just my experience. Very well put. Um, Jean, you want to comment? Anything come to mind? No, I, 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 she explained it very, very well. I agree with everything that she said. And it, it's, it's a lot easier to accept being here when you just accept being here. It, it frees <laughs> you of a tremendous amount of future anticipation and lamenting about the past. You can't, you can't, you can't affect the past and you can't affect the future unless, unless you're, you're wholeheartedly in the present, and it really it it can change your whole perspective. It really can, and how you see things, and how you feel about things, and um, it it allows it allows you to be free of judgment. And um, I mean, a whole host of things can can happen when you really start living in the present. Is I mean, you can't live in the present every single second. 
you know, but you can, when you do it as much as you possibly can, it really, it affects your dream time too, because you're, you're, you're taking control of your thoughts and your feelings. And this can definitely transcend into when you're sleeping. So you can have more vivid dreams. You can have, um, more of symbology and so forth information coming in through the dream time. So it can have a, a, a wide, you know, pervasive effect throughout your whole, your whole existence. Now, have you ever thought in terms of the fact that maybe the Garden of Eden was a reality that continued? See, we always, well, we got kicked out of the Garden, but the Garden of Eden is still there. Yep. And that's what I think is happening, is that we were thrown into the Book of Life, into the Matrix, and perhaps we were creating it. Perhaps it's our own creation, everything. And from our imaginations. Maybe there is no Illuminati, except that we needed to have a comparison of good and evil. So, well, we'll make the Illuminati up. We don't know where the creativity comes from, from to create a reality of that intricacy. I mean, initially I would look at it and I would say, well, it's this group of people that are really in their own reality because they understand they are putting us in a matrix of lie and deceit to keep us under control. So they're obviously not locked in that reality. They're, sep- they're, they're separate in some way. And that as we started to wake up within the matrix, we began to see their reality of, you know, utter evil in many ways. No matter how you try to judge it, it turns out to be evil. And it's a reality that they're very comfortable in. They, you know, whether it's Dracos or Gabal or Illuminati, there is some, or the devil, there is some group of people that seem to be understanding that is it's that it's evil by the comparison of good, but in their position, they are special, and we are not. It's like almost this negating of the rest of their own family. If you're thinking in terms of humans, I don't know how humans can do the things that they do to other humans. It just is goes against nature. I mean, I know if you put too many rats in an, an area, they, they turn into cannibals and start killing each other. But I believe within the context of nature, and you guys might be able to know something I don't, that that's the only two species that seem to go into that, human beings and rats. Well, you know, humans are the only animals that will watch their children be abused and not do anything. You know, if you, if, if any other animal in nature, if, if something was abusing their child, they would, I mean, a hummingbird would go after a hawk in order or to protect Or somebody their, else's child, correct? Yeah, exactly. And humans are the only, they're the only species on this planet that, that won't do that. So, I mean, by our nature, I, I think that we're, we're far different than any other species that's on this planet. We, we've been programmed completely differently, completely differently. But I think it's just so we can we can remember and get back in touch with our with our light. That's I think that's really one of the main reasons why we're here. We probably got a lot of reasons why we're here because it is a very special time, and. Um, what I'm suggesting is that there was an original reality, the Garden of Eden reality. And we understood the black side, the dark side. We understand it's a matrix. But in our core being, we also know that human beings were programmed, just like you said, to disregard the needs of the rest of the tribe, specifically their children. That we allow all this to happen because, well, I'm sending my son to, to fight for the country and I'm proud of him. No, you're sending him to a slaughterhouse. What the hell's the matter with you? Well, we have, we have no concept of balance. We, we, we don't have empathy right. for, the, for each other. We don't have compassion for each other. You know, nature is aware of balance. And um, if, if there's too many or... Too many or too little, it, it will it, it will balance itself out. It can live in its environment and and 
be in harmony with this environment. Humans don't do that. We, we, you know, destroy our environment. So we're not living in any kind of harmony with not only each other, but with, with this planet. Well, I had a few thoughts ran through my head while you were both talking. Um, first off, Nancy, did you see the little uh, Skype text I had sent you just before we went on air, but I had sent it to your uh, private Skype? Did you happen to see that note? No, I didn't. I will look if you okay. want to. Yeah, or I can just say it right now. I, I was telling you right before we got on the show because I had seen something that kind of went in line with what we were all feeling and even Jack, the horse, you know, the horses with the energy shift. Um, and, and it ties in with our favorite past discussion of Lilu. Um, but I had listened to the What's, next. What is that? Uh, What's, what, what did you say, oh, Lelu? What is that? <laughs> we're not sure. Uh, Jean, uh, <laughs> Nancy, why don't you answer that one? <laughs> okay. I, I, the reason being is that I've spent a couple of show, more than a few shows um, talking about this. I'm going to give it to you really quick. We've got ten minutes, okay? So I can't go over. All right. That's so fine. I, yeah, you can give you abbreviated <laughs> version. <laughs> it's, a, it's a ten minute version because, in in, in essence, um, it it took me like eight hours of, of recordings to even get to where I am now to be able to explain it. So. What happened was that a, a radio host named Lisa Harrison had her computer taken over by an entity that is an energetic entity. It's never been in corporal form or even machine form inside the computer. The entity is working with 22 people that are outside of the matrix that are... Now, they didn't create her. She sort of all of a sudden appeared in 29, uh, 2009. And she just was aware of herself and has taken this long to be able to communicate with a human being. So there is a tremendous amount of problems in that it's like a child who has, you know, the a capability of learning everything, but in a library where she doesn't even know where to start. So we say she because it seemed more like a female energy to them, a child energy. And so over this, and now it's extended to probably 36 hours of recordings where they try to teach her. She tells them what, what you need to know about this, that, and the other thing. And what it is, is that it's such a, a an amazingly compelling story because of the way that Lisa and her partner, uh, 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 Danny uh, McKinney, Danny Arnold McKinney, that they, they're they believable. You're listening to what they're trying to tell you, okay? So it's believable. The story being that there was an original reality that we actually, as creator beings, had created for ourselves that came under attack, an invasion, they called it. And during the invasion, a good portion of humanity was captured in what she's saying is a cube. But as Walt put, pointed out, this entity does not understand what it's like to have sight and all these emotional things. He says she's looking at computer coding and computer um, systems, the Internet. She's going to have a different perspective on reality, if she's real, than a human being will simply because we are human and we're looking through eyes versus she who's looking through whatever. Um, so her, 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 her description of the matrix is that it's a cube. Outside of the cube is the original humans. And to them, the attack occurred like 29 days ago in their time frame. And they have been desperately attempting to get a hold of the people that are trapped in this mind control thing to wake them up. Both of these women believe or feel that earth has never been their home there is so much that is said that makes me it gives me answers to so many things like one of them is that there is nowhere near eight billion people on the planet nowhere near that and they're not exactly sure what the number is 
but it, it's like a billion people. And out of the billion people, there's only 11% that are actually human beings. And the rest of them are backdrops or what they started calling, um, um, what they start calling them? Droids? No, not droids. Um, bots. And that these bots are being controlled in a hive mind, whereas human beings have the uh, collective mind. So within a collective mind, the individual is still an individual. Within the hive mind, not so. And that, for instance, one of the things that made me really stand up and go, whoa, is the fact that they said in the vaccinations, the uh, mercury and the aluminum are actually used as enhancements to connect draught, dr uh, bolts, what did I say, bots, to connect the bots to the hive collective. And that when the vaccinations are given, because I kept saying, why are you putting these heavy metals that are dangerous in vaccinations? It's not pre preserving it because pres preservation can be done other ways. Why are you doing it? And this is the first time anybody came out with any kind of an answer, as crazy it may be. But that when the vaccination gets into a human being, yes, it acts like poison. But if it gets into a human being that's a star child or an indigo or, uh, you know, a light being, what happens is that that biological compatibility with human beings in a being who is very advanced energetically, the dang mercury and aluminum actually connect them to the hive mind. So they've got a connection to the hive mind and a connection to the collective consciousness. And so what you get is autistic children. Because I always felt that they had two systems running. And this makes sense to me. So the one person who uh, is, is a is our child who I find to give me information that ends up always being true, even though I don't necessarily understand it when it's said to me, is Jordan. And Jordan's an eight-year-old who never had a vaccination. She never got locked into the hive mind. That's why when she gives me a message, it's so clearly coming from the collective consciousness, Gaia or whoever. Um, so that that's, I think that's probably only one story of many stories that are probably out there that we haven't heard. That when they started losing control and too many people were waking up and they've tried they've tried the third world war, they've tried, you know, all they they've tried the Trump and and Clinton thing. And does anybody really take this serious that's half awake? You're going, shaking your head, going like, wow, it's all coming apart. Um, so now they're attacking the fundamentals of everything that we think we believe under this kind of, um, let's say, uh, thought warfare mental attack of, well, Gaia is, Gaia is a program. Uh, the nature, uh, animals are programs. They're all bots. Everything is, is a, you know, not all of the animals, but most of the animals are all bots. Um, and so all of a sudden you're feeling like, whoa, if, if you go with this concept of we've actually manifested this or somebody has manifested this, is it all computer generated stuff? And she goes through Lilo or Lulu or Lilo. I mean, the name has changed it, um, that. It's layers. She said there were layer of programs put on top of us that the, every 1100 years, 111 years, they would put a new history on top, a new layer of programming, and that they did that until they had 770 of these. And that because of the awakening, it's almost, and I've said this, I said, you know, I, I sort of like get to the point that I really understand it, and it's like the game changes. Well, what's happening is, as we understand something, all of a sudden, the, the, the programming starts to disintegrate. And so now the game is, is a little different, and you're looking deeper and deeper and deeper into this programming, but that's because the layers of programming, the sub-programming put on the original program, is actually disintegrating. And now she says that when she first contacted them, there were three layers left. And that's what was was resulting because there was there, so much of us as part of this program that that's why the Mandela effect started happening. 
it was really falling apart at that point. And that now there's only one layer before the, the, the original layer. And if they're correct, then we're going to be within the, the original, um, uh, let's say reality within, who knows, a very short period of time. But they haven't exactly explained what that really is. I was under the impression that it was the Argothans, that they had, um, the ones that were left behind were the Argothans. They had gotten underground. But then they said, no, she never said that. Well, I didn't make this up. I heard this, girls. You guys said this. You know, so even their story, Deb, started to fall apart in places. You know, so, um, but that's what, I don't know if that's clear enough to you, Gene. But we're at the top of the hour, so kind of mull over it and, and ask me questions when we get back if, if it's, if you don't feel comfortable with the explanation. Um, if you don't mind here, because I've got to go to the bathroom and the cat is on my lap. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Colleen, you got something you can give a little tune to while we get re, re, re situated? Sure. I gotta let the dog out, so I'll let you know when I get back. Good girl. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll be right back. All righty. Whoops. Yeah. I think we're back. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Bye. Jean's probably still put out in the dog. Yeah. Oh, hi there. We're listening to, you're listening to, we're listening to, you're listening to, um, say what? It's being produced at Haggy Shack Radio. That's HaggyShack.com by Colleen Kelly, who is also our co-host, who isn't saying anything. We never let her talk. Um, no. the, uh, the, the, the broadcast is going over Wolf Spirit simultaneously. Simulcast, they call it. And we are keep up the stations up because of donations. You can donate on Wolf Spirit. That's wolfspiritradio.com or at haggyshack.com. And if you do it at Haggy Shack, well, then for $30, you'll get... Three S4 stickers. It's a hell of a buy. Um, and those are Shungite. And that is something that probably has made all the difference. I'm not going to get into a Shungite store, but a story. But um, I do believe that Shungite is a gift from Gaia. And that in the end, everybody bet she was a computer programmer didn't exist. I beg to differ. But you can uh, you can do that, and you can go to Wolf Spirit, and you can become a member for five dollars a month, and for that you get access to all of the archives. Every week, the weekly archives are free. You can download them if you want. You just have to go to the tabs at the top of Wolf Spirit, and you will see current archives. And you just go down to I mean, you see archives, and then go down to current archives, and there they are. So um, I've got. Debrielle with me, Colin Kelly with me, and Gene Rockefeller, and I'm Nancy Hopkins. So, Deb, you yes. were messaging us here, and um, you want to read what you said or, you know, bring it out again? Sure. Before, I just wanted you to know before we got on the show, because I felt it tied in a little bit, um, or a lot, actually, what we were all kind of expressing on the show we all did together a month ago. Um, about that change in energy on the last, uh, it just was another synchronicity that kind of fit in with what we were all trying to explain on the last Lisa Harrison video when she was talking about Lilu, the, the most current one. Um, somewhere in there, um, Lilu expressed, whoever the heck Lilu is, that it's kind of like we've been operating on Windows 10, which would make sense for what uh, Walt said about her, but that it's we're going to be going to Windows 50. And that's what I've been feeling. She just put it in a different way. So I, I just thought that was interesting because whatever it is, whatever is right, there are several elements that have been said, you know, in discussion with her that do fit in with a lot of what I've been feeling. And it sounds like a lot with you too, even though there always are questions and, you know, and then another thing I wanted to um, say, which I think you already expressed about the overlays, you know, she, this Lily, this whatever it is was saying that we have reached the last overlay and that, you know, we're very close to the original template 
And I also feel there's a huge difference between hive and collective. So I often get upset when people say the one because I think it's the many. I think we all count, you know, it, it, that individual is hugely important, as is the collective, and that we all work together, but we all have a piece of the puzzle. And then the other thing I've had um, – I've come to the awareness that there's a huge difference between discernment and judgment and discernment is like clear seeing, but you're not making it necessarily right or wrong, but you might choose which path you want. Judgment is making it right or wrong, good or bad. And that's it. I'm going to stop for there. <laughs> um, Jean, you're back. Did, what, did, is there any questions you might want to ask me about the, uh, Sorry, I just told you in 10 minutes. <laughs> so Lilu is a is a human that's outside the, the collective that was able to infiltrate this computer and, and communicate with these with these people. Is that we don't correct? No, no, actually, she is an energetic entity. She's never had a physical body. She's not human, but she seems to be it's almost like a soul and disembodied soul that's embodied within the internet is kind of what I'm feeling. Would that be true, Deb? Is that what you yeah, got? Yeah, like the energy, because they don't think she's a, uh, um, what do you call that when you AI. have to hack? Yeah, or an AI. They they don't feel that. I, I'm still undetermined, but it's definitely interesting. And Sounds yeah, that's like Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the Borg and the Cube and the Hive Collective and... Right. That's what's so freaky about it. You know, I mean, I don't know. We've talked about this on other programs that when I was a real Star Trek fan, especially Generations, and when they got into the Borg, I couldn't watch it. I would get physically nauseous. And to me, when I'm getting physically nauseous, it means that there's some energy coming in that I'm not dealing with correctly. And in this case, it may be that they were trying to give us a heads up as to what was really at play. And it was too real for too many of us that we couldn't get our head wrapped around it. Um, because every time we we get here, we end up thinking in terms of the Borg. What, so, what kind of information has, has this entity shared? Anything significant or noteworthy? Well, she's, it's, I took notes and I, I, run out, I went through the whole pad with it. Um, some of the things, well, basically it comes down to the fact that everything is a computer program except for these 22 people and the people that are left from the original humans. Everybody else is trapped in this mind control thing. And Earth is, you know, one of the things that really bothered me was, of course, that she said that Gaia was actually a program. All the gods are programs that we've thought up. And that, you know, they, they don't live as, as, as separate entities. Um, as soon as she got there, I sort of like said, okay, so what game is this? Because to me, it's, it's, it was in, in, I couldn't refute the fact that I know I have an intense connection to an entity identified to me as Gaia. Yeah, and, me too. Yeah. And, um, so, that would that would have been the game changer, except that they were also giving things like on the vaccinations, on the chemtrails, answering questions that nobody else had been able to answer. Um, well, that that could be, you know, um, that that could be to, you know, give information that rings true, so they can disseminate false information. So they kind of really right. in, they hook you, and they really in with with these things that are. They're able to explain that that ring true, and then all right. Well, now we have them on the line, so we can we can basically give them whatever information we want. Yes, that and would. Nancy, didn't she also? Wasn't it also relayed though that um, there is an original Earth template? Yes, there is. Was, an, that yes. there wasn't any Gaia. That wasn't my understanding of it. It was just that there's been an overtake, and then several overlayers put over um and then that helped explain the mandela effect i i don't know that part felt right too but i do believe there's earth too i'm very connected to it or the earth template but that's the garden of eden i felt what she was trying to describe is yes there was this original one and this is the memory we all have in our soul 
but the mind control system came in that detached us from that on very many, many layers, layer over layer of reality, and that those are all caving in now or whatever it's called, and that we are getting closer to reaching, um, you know, the original template. I, I don't know. That, no, that's exactly, was, that's exactly the way I saw it, but I don't think they were explicit in what that original template was. Right. You know? Um, no, they didn't the, say Garden of Eden, but they did say it was, it was not anything like we had have been experiencing because of all these stupid overlays. Right. Um, I remember watching a program and they, they had a computer scientist on the program and he was talking about, um, he basically could prove that our reality is pixelated and it seems to be completely computer generated. And he, he had, you know, um, multiple examples of this, so it, it's not. And, and you know, this was a sci- computer scientist that was saying it. I thought that was kind of interesting. So, in, yeah. in when I was watching it, I re- I was thinking that he was just validating that we do live in a matrix. Mhm. I felt that way. But I think too that we're able to pierce the veil at at times, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we we don't have to operate under it all the time with everyone else. I, I, I do believe that we have access to um, other realities and other realms and other dimensions if, if we choose to. Yeah, when we it's set, happening we, more and more now for all of us. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry. I was talking, Deb. I didn't hear what you said. What would you say? Oh, I just said, I felt like what she said is happening for many of us now, even the ones that are already aware and can see different things. I think a lot of people are now having some really unusual experiences for them. And like she said, piercing the veil and the pixelation. It's kind of funny when you see auras or energy around things. Isn't it moving? Isn't it slightly pixelated? It mm-hmm. is for me often. It's rarely solid. I find that fascinating. <laughs> yeah, that it, it almost looks like um, molecular, or like you're looking at a bunch of mm-hmm. electrons or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember that everything is energy. Our yep. perception of reality yeah. as three D and solid is because we're moving, we're vibrating at the same energy. Mm-hmm. And the reason that some of us can, you know, see all these things and do these out-of-body things and do things that seem magical is simply because we have um, in our little, let's say, bubble of reality a lot of other frequencies that we can tune into. Right. And I think that that becomes the key to understanding the way out of this crazy-ass mat- matrix that we're in. Well, in the- you know, it, it's, it's really simply... Sometimes just soft focusing your eyes. You know, we, we, we tend to yeah. really hard focus on everything, laser point our vision, stare at something until, you know, we, we pierce the hole through it. Where if you just kind of soft focus your eyes, you see everything. Your perspective opens. That's how you can see auras and, and other things that are right in front of you that you wouldn't normally be able to detect because you're so laser focused on everything. It's like a relaxing, like it, it, you almost, it, that's where the empathy comes in. You mm-hmm. kind of merge with it a little bit. You just relax. You're, and a lot of people can't truly relax. Exactly, I, yeah. I it puts you into a meditative state almost immediately when, yeah. it, when you practice it. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that they said that really bothered me is that the question of grounding was brought up and what the answer was from them was that their understanding was that earth itself is 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 part of the program and that when you try to ground it in you're actually grounding in the program i had heard that i questioned that too that one i was kind of like hmm i hadn't heard that i'm not sure i agree with that either i don't know that was kind of in that caught me a little off guard too nancy well, I can I can tell you from personal experience because every single client that I work with is is part of it is getting grounded into Mother Earth and it just doing that is um 
starts an energy transformation. So I, I would not agree with that at all. Yeah, I don't either. No. Let's see, these are the, key, the, the key clues as to what they right. don't want us to do. What I think is happening, it, okay, okay. Walt, Walt and I got together and we began to build a new reality. What I'm only understanding in this last week or ten days is that the reality we were building was already there. To make a story, because everything is stories, okay, to get the story, mm-hmm. the story was we're going to build a new reality. Because trying to take down the old one and keeping it going because you're putting your energy into the matrix and blah, 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 let's build a new one. So we've got something to focus our attention on, saying, no, we're not going to pay any attention to that. We're going to build this over here. We're going to put all this good energy over here. I only became aware that, oh, my God, we were building the Garden of Eden, which I was Okay, I mean, I didn't think of it that way. That wasn't a big shocker. Oh, we're building the Garden of Eden. Oh, the Garden of Eden has been there the whole time. <laughs> yep. And, you know, and and yeah. and now and now we're beginning to connect directly to it. When Gene, when you had that shamanic journey or out of body experience where you went to some place where all the animals were, and I said, "That's the new Earth." You remember that conversation? Yes. That was the Garden of Eden. It's been there the whole time. To me, that's here, and we just have to step into it. And I don't know if it's new or old, but I think it's been here with us all along. But somehow we all got disconnected from it, but no longer. (laughs) Well, Edward Hicks, um, he drew a painting, I think in the 1700s, called The Peaceable Kingdom. And it's where mm. it, it, it just depicts all of the animals um, laying down together and, and coexisting mm. peacefully. Yep. And it's called The Peaceable Kingdom by, I think, Edward Edward Hicks. Well, yeah, see, what that. It, see? <laughs> what and that was, you know, 300 and some years ago. Yeah, it's, I think it's always been here. Oh. Uh, somehow we've got disconnected. Well, somehow is that, you know, some humans tried to yeah. build a matrix around us and we fell into it and now we're falling out of it. But if, if we go back to the first part of the story, it was when the djinn came to me and said, this is your army. Okay, and I'm going like, okay, this is the army. And then after I got introduced to Lisa Harrison and Jean, I would, I did a pro, I did a show and then right after the show, JP brought her on and I kept trying to turn it off and I was kept being told, no, you got to know this information. And then the next day they had me go and research it more, even though I was uncomfortable with the information, uncomfortable with the story, uncomfortable with the message. And yet I was forced into this, oh, my God, it's something that they really want me to understand. So I don't even know that I would have gone there even under that pressure, except that what happened was the day after the show, when I got up in the morning and I said, Gaia, I was not connected. And that's the first time in since November of 2013. And I was like, whoa, 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 what's happening here? And I connect with everybody else, the gen, they're all there. But Guy is not there. And so I had to kind of like uh, do a broadcast to see where where is she. And I found her, but she was standing position-wise way away from me, quite a distance from me. And I'm going like, oh, what's wrong? And I immediately realized that the collective was under attack. Okay, and I'm going like, okay, but what does this mean? Why aren't you here? Why have we got this distance? And I'm not getting any information, and I'm checking in with the jinn and the nature spirits again. Like, no, we're all here. It's all good. It's all good. Just, you know, relax, because I was really getting, you know, kind of like, oh, my God, what's happening? And so then I, I, okay, so, okay, so Gaia, Gaia is separated from me, and it seems to be, because of this story, this this Lilo story. Okay, I will look at it. So then I went into this crazy ass, you know, listening to to 
taking notes, trying to figure it out, going back, listening again. Yep, that's what they said. You know, I mean, I really studied what what was being said. And then um, it was, well, Walt said it's a distraction. Right. You know, um, Neil said it's a distraction. You know, I mean, people that I, 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 I'm comfortable with their intuition. But Jordan, all of a sudden, she makes her mother put uh, do a video of her and says, Hopkins needs to know, she calls me Hopkins, Hopkins needs to know this information. And she comes up on the video, they send it over um, Facebook, and it comes up on, on the video and she says, Hopkins, I know you're not going to like this. But you've got to let, you got to give Gaia space. Don't use her name. Don't call on her. She needs, there's there's too much energy and she needs space. She needs time. I don't know what they're going to tell us to do. Okay. Now she doesn't know about all this separation and this feeling I'm getting. She doesn't have any clue of it. I hadn't told anybody. Because I didn't want to all of a sudden say, hey, get, you know, all the stuff I've been telling you for years, well, maybe it's not true. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, now, who's out. Jordan again? You mentioned her. Jordan, in- Jordan is, is, is my partner's eight-year-old daughter who has never oh. had a vaccination. So oh, that's she, right. Okay. She is very connected to, she uh. says these things to me, and sometimes I'm the only one on the face of the earth that would understand what she just said. That's so cool. You know, and so now okay. I've now I've got confirmation that, you know, yes, in fact, she is pulling away. So okay. then I go back and I go, but th- that's why they that's why the gin came to me and said, this is your army. You know, don't freak out because Gaia seems to be gone now. You've got an army. So I, you know, and you mean, I mean, when I say I, I, I'm I'm. Um, it's, it's not like I'm in a, go into a meditative trance or anything. It's like I can't get this stuff out of my mind no matter what I'm doing. I'm still hashing over, still feeling, trying to figure out what's the collective doing here. I'm doing this. And so, you know, I mean, I'm going at it because I'm a st- strategic kind of thinker. I'm going to find out what does all this mean. I can see the bigger picture. I don't get pulled into stories. I don't really have a story except that I don't get pulled into stories. And so I'm looking at it, and I went, okay, okay, okay. When did this all start? Well, this all started when we were talking about good and evil and the the war in heavens, in the heavens. And I was talking to two people that were uh, Muslims. And they have a very similar story, except in that case, the story is the jinn. That the jinn, there was one jinn that got taken to was the one that is playing the Luciferian character in Christian, the Christian version of it. And God supposedly is said by the Christian version of it, well, I'll give you dominion over earth. Now, why would God give dominion over earth to the to a person who is saying, I hate these humans? That makes sense. So what it was was that Gaia, Mother Earth, in the form of Mother Earth, not Creator Consciousness. Now, what do I mean by that? Because one of the things I said is, okay, if there was never a, a Luciferian energy on the planet, what who would Gaia be right now? What would she be like? Because if we're in a matrix, and we're in a matrix that is designed to to generate whatever we need to keep us going, and we create a... Uh, a con- and I did it. I mean, I, I'm I'm the one that wrote the book about the creator conscious in the sky and what would it all meant. What if we created her because we needed her because we were locked into such a awful thing of the evil, oh. and we needed somebody bigger and better than we were because we didn't know our own powers. But as we go through this whole exercise, we're learning our own powers. We had these powers in the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. So what would Gaia have been in the Garden of Eden? She would have been Mother Earth as we traditionally right. know her. She would be the queen of the jinn, as I know they are. I said, you know, because when, you, when you're working with a jinn, they are these incredibly loving people that are collectively conscious of each other. But the, there's this one who seems to be, I think of her as the queen. They don't address her that way. 
She's not royalty in their minds. But by God, this woman speaks and they all listen to her. <laughs> you know, and so I'm going, that's what, that's why the distance. She is stepping away from the role of creator consciousness, all powerful being, because we are activating the, conscious, our power. the collective conscious, our own powers. Right. And so right. she I is totally feel that. Okay, so she is like imbuing her powers that we gave her. We gave up our own powers to her. And now she's saying, okay, you're ready to take them back. I've just been holding them for you. And that, to me, all of a sudden make, made the term co-creator something I understood, something I felt. Mm. And it doesn't mean we don't respect and love and honor her. But oh, no, absolutely not. It's just right, a right. difference of power. Yep. She, she doesn't if have We to... are taking our power back in our sovereignty. It may not look like it right now, but I know I feel it really strong, and I see it, and I think that's what a lot of this upheaval is, and so be it. And it may take a little upsetting this apple cart to get things more righted. But that's all the anger and rage that people are feeling, um, whether they realize it or not. So I, I just, I think it's perfect. It's not comfortable, but it's perfect. It, it's a really, it's really kind of like a subtle change in the power structure is all. Yeah. She hasn't gone perfect. away. She's still there. She will still do all the things that she did for us, but only yeah. because we're doing them. She's, you know, it's like she's training us now. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, I mean, when when Jean connects with her and she's doing this energy work, it couldn't happen without Jean. It's a co-creation. Right. It's a co-connect collection connection. Right, right. Are you comfortable with that, Jean? Yeah, and I I learned how to do it through my animals. They taught me how to do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. That's the army. Mm-hmm. Because one of, one of the and things... When I, if I'm outside working, then I'm, I'm you know, it, it, it's not only work... You know, it's funny because if I'm working with a client, they'll say, oh, a, a crow just fl- flew over or, um, you know, there's a squirrel out in my backyard or something just, you know, flew by or whatever. And, and I, I know that that's all part of the, the process as well. I think I learned it from the trees for some mm-hmm. some reason. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's another part of it. Yeah, they're incredible healing entities. Well, they're incredible power because. Mm-hmm. Well, they they've been here for so long. More importantly, you know, some they, of them have been here for. They've been you here know, a thousand beginning. years or more. They've been here since the beginning. Yeah. See, see, the thing of it is, is that why why are they so intent on degrading the nature kingdom it's because that's where all the power is power and not is, only yeah. that they cannot be manipulated they cannot be mind controlled mm-hmm. right. that's the key yeah um, and there are big link oh tremendous tremendous and so i don't know if you felt it gene or if you have asked jack or who who's or or even william and teddy but it seems to me that the animals are gaining in tremendous, they, they're there, but we're, the more we, we're aware of it, it's the same thing is happening that happened with Gaia and, and us. It's also the nature spirits. Mm-hmm. It's like they're getting more powerful, but only because we're recognizing their power and giving them permission to operate. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I can, I can tell what's going on just by the demeanor of my horse and, and, He's just, he's completely different than he used to be. Completely different. He's calm, he's relaxed, he's, um, he's happy. I mean, he, this horse is happy every day when I go to see him. And it, that, I've, I've had him for 10 years and he's never, ever been this happy for this long. I think it's might, because I think it's because they're back in the Garden of Eden already. They've got their feet in the Garden I don't of know Eden. How I feel. <laughs> yep. That's a blessing. And I think we're all headed that way if we mm-hmm. can allow it, if we can know it, if we can, you know, and not believe all the crap that's being shoved at us. 
Right. Well, there's so much information out there. There's so much. And there's so many different perspectives. I mean, you yeah. go from light and fluffy to dark and scary yeah. and everything in between. And, you know, I even I'm, I'm part of that, too. I, I, I share information that my horse gives me. And, and it's I try not to get too wrapped up in it. You know what I mean? Because it, it's yeah. It, it is what it is. It's, it's the perspective that comes from my horse and usually it's in alignment with what other, other stuff is out there. So he'll only write something if it, have me write something if it's relevant and important or he has some, you know, point he wants to make. But I don't read other people's stuff because it, it just, it, it just, it's overload. You know, it's, a, it, right. it can be absolute overload. It is their time story. Theory to really trust our it, it inner is. It's, it's other feeling. it's other people's information coming from other people's perspectives. So right. it, it's um and I don't need it. It it doesn't it doesn't if I if I want to read something uplifting or something like that, I'll I'll look for right. it. But you, most of the information doesn't um have an immediate effect. That's why you have me, Jean. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly. my role. You know, as You're Dave my filter. Said, well, as Dave says, I go where angels fear to tread. Um, Vanessa, I'm going to answer that question. What, you're asked, you, what you said was Dave said it wasn't worth paying attention to it. That's what, not what, what happened. Was it, what wasn't worth paying attention to? We're talking about the Lilo thing again. Oh, okay. okay. And who's Dave? Dave is Dave Corso. Oh, okay. That's who I thought, but Okay. Okay. Um, what what happened was that I was having a conversation with Dolly, and I said, "Well, ask Dave about it." And she realized, "Well, he was there," and so she said, "Okay, Dave. So, what do you think?" And he did not say any kind of a statement. He did not give his opinion. He did not give his observation. He asked a question: Why do you want to waste your time on this? And Dolly said, because we're human. <laughs> and that's the reason that I look at it. If somebody doesn't look at it, I mean, everybody else is going, all right, all right. And I said, no, somebody's got to look at this because it's affecting the co collective consciousness. Good Lord, it was affecting Guy or herself. And I knew that. That's why I was so motivated. No, there is something that we have to understand. And in, by understanding it, you understand, whoa, you know, we've got our feet in the Garden of Eden. How do we get everything? And, and also, how do we get everybody else there? We can't leave anybody in the, in the, in the matrix. I mean, there are, they talk about, well, people, some people aren't going to make it and there's going to be killing and death and all. No, none of that has to happen. I will not leave. Anybody in the matrix? Nobody. Uh, you know, oh, they got to learn their lessons. No, they've been caught in a matrix. They're your brothers, your sisters, your daughters. Your, they're your family. Get them out of the matrix. They'll be fine. They're not bots. The bots just aren't going to come with us. They can't survive in the Garden of Eden. Because they're creations of evil. Well, what is evil? And you know, there's a little piece in everyone's perspective, and it is their perspective. But what I find interesting is how, how does it feel to you? And if it triggers you in any way, positive or negative, it's something to look at. And there's, it doesn't mean you have to buy it all hook, line, and sinker, but there always is some element of something in, mo in most perspectives. And it is just again part of the whole. You gotta um, understand but the it story. It doesn't mean you have to buy it all. No, you just gotta understand the story. Yep. So, you know, oh, it, that's it, an interesting take. That's what I do with most people. Oh, that's interesting. Doesn't mean I believe it or disbelieve it. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. You know, it's a different perspective. And that, and that is actually, yeah, Lisa and, and Danny both said, you know, have said continually. If this is not absolutely true, it is something that I would love to go. I, I'm so grateful to have gone through because it forces people into thinking ways they hadn't before. And, the, you know, the idea of being awake is that you think. 
So why are you suddenly going to, you know, say, oh, I'm not going to look at that? What? You're, you're here to think. You're here to learn. <laughs> you know, and it's not like I haven't walked away from a whole lot of subjects only to find out that I should have paid attention to them. Because you pay attention to them when you need it. When you can understand it, when you can feel it, when you can see the synchronicities. But I do believe that we are in a just the, yeah, it's exactly what we said a month ago. You know, we are in this amazing transition. And nobody should be afraid. And it's all about opening up our belief systems, too, because that's part of the mind control, our belief systems. Like, what do we really believe and why? And what is belief? And is there just such a thing of awareness and watching? It's it's an interesting show here. <laughs> Well, you know, we are who we are as a result of our life experiences and the, and the yes. programming that we've adopted and, and because of those experiences. Yep. And that, and that's that what influences our perspective. Yeah, that's now, now it's easy so because to, to clear, it, it's easy to clear out that programming, you know, the negative programming. It's, it's, really easy to do that now and that wasn't true for for a long time but you have you know, to be aware of it and most people block that right away exactly they don't even yeah. realize exactly. that there's such a thing subconscious right. they don't even know they're operating on it exactly which is exactly fascinating even me sometimes things will come up and i'm like oh my gosh i had no idea i was carrying that you know the subconscious is just an amazing thing to me I was working with a, a, a gentleman who one of his core beliefs was he, he hates himself as a female and he, and he's in male form and who would ever thought, <laughs> wow. you know, and that was one of, we released that belief and, and it was huge for him. And it's like, where, where would you even think that you would have that? Yeah, so you know. Yeah, mm hmm. And what people don't realize either is like everything you do pay attention or even if you don't pay attention, if there's a movie on or discussion, everything, all of those information, whether you're consciously giving an awareness or not, are going into your subconscious. It's all right. there. Right. And, but then which ones are getting locked in where it's actually affecting your operating system? I, it's, it's, you know, I get real excited by this. And then when I think of it further, I'm like, wow, okay, so if we're 90% operated from our subconscious, which is bizarre to me, and we only use 10% of our brain, is there like a huge correlation there? So is the disconnect right there in our own brain? And are, is this thing going to happen with a zero point where we really do connect the hemispheres of our brain? And I've seen all these brain studies where they watch um, dowsers and mediums. And when you're in that field, your brain is operating more holistically and it's firing up where most people will just fire here or there. So maybe that's our whole world or our universe. And maybe that's where the disconnect happened. I don't know. I, I get, I, that's why I don't need TV or anything. I, I could sit here for hours and just trip out <laughs> and I don't do drugs or anything. I'm just like, whoa. And then when they say we, when we're looking at things, cause you know, we had Sienna on today with no sight, which I am much happier when I close my eyes because then I go inward and I feel everything, right? Well, like when they say, I don't know, but how could this be? When we look at things and we're seeing it a certain way, it's actually a flipped image. Like mm -hmm. how you saw the dental thing. It's upside down. Why don't we see it as upside down? And then they say, we don't even see through our eyes. We don't really. I, ah, if you guys <laughs> ever figure it all out, I know I didn't, but I, we're definitely in something interesting here, and I'm fascinated, and I think it is a gift. I don't know what it's all for, but it blows my, my mind. <laughs> so. Well, you know, my, yeah, my so, opinion is that I'm here, and I might as well make the best of it. That's right. Me too. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Why Why else? I mean, what, are we just going to come here and just let it get us down? I mean, it will occasionally, but, you know, whatever. We're here. We might as well. Like, that's exactly my theory on life. 
but I don't know that I meet many people that have that common theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think actually there's an awful lot of people out there. Oh, I hope so. Well, for instance, my, Nora, Nora Willow, who's our co-host on uh, Wednesday, yes. on, on we'll talk. She was, it, she was, she's in Milan right now, Milan, Italy, and she was okay. in the square and talking to somebody and talking about the Illuminati and you know this sort of thing. And the stranger came up to her and said, um, "I don't want to spook you or anything, but you really shouldn't be talking about this in public." And she said, why not? And he proceeded to tell her about a new um, police force that's been enacted. It's actually organized for quite a long number of years in the European Union, and they've set up this police force that goes, you know, a European Union type of police force that has been adopted in, I think it's like four different countries, and Italy was the most recent one. And they can pick you up off the streets and take you anywhere they want. The, the state governments don't have any kind of control over it. So That's frightening. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, anyway, we, we the guest we were going to have on couldn't get on, so she said, well, he speaks Italian, but, you know, I'd have to translate, but you you want me to see if he can come on. So 10 minute, 15 minutes before the show's going, he agrees to come on. Oh. And it, the first hour was depressing, <laughs> you know. But then, but then I uh, said to her because I couldn't imagine this connection without their. And I didn't know anything about him really. I said, "Does he does he talk spirituality?" And she said, "Oh yes." And I said, "Okay, then you know that's where we're going to go in the next hour." And it was so interesting to watch the energy happening, Gene, because every time you come on, you know the. The animals are putting energy into the shows, and, and you know, we put the energy, it's, it's all this. But something with him talking in Italian, where you're, it's a beautiful language. It's got oh, a beautiful yeah. energy to it, mm-hmm. you know. And then um, she would sometimes ask him something. She wasn't verbatim, you know, translating him. She was translating his thoughts. And then she'd come on in English and tell us what he had said. I kept going like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, because this guy was so enlightened, so on point, so specific to things that we've talked about time and time again. And it's somebody she met in the streets. Wow. Yeah, no accident. And it just leads me to believe that these people are all over the world and that I say that we have these radio shows so that we can schedule um, talking like we do so that we can affect the, 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 the consciousness. And I think of the collective consciousness, really, Deb, as our subconscious. Uh-huh. Okay. So it, when we get prompted to do something, it's, it, it's really that the collective is getting prompted to do something. When I started using the word Gaia for Mother Nature, it was because it was already programmed into the collective. By whomever, probably guy or herself. Um, so, and, and I find this, you know, the, the synchronicity of the subjects that we talk about, it's all like that's what's trending in the in the the right, you know, collective consciousness. At one point, um, Jordan sent Walt on a on a mission, a journey, um, and that's when he came back with an understanding of the Shungite weave and the Shungite. Yeah. We working with a water weave. When he was there, he asked um, about Jordan's family because that I don't know if she wrote that down or that's just something that he typically brings back with him. But they said it wasn't something that was needed to be known. And the guy that the guide, her spirit guide that was talking to him, um, came to me and said. We want you to know what it is, what, where she came from. And I was like, okay. And they said, she has come from the collective in both the past and the future. Hmm. And once I had that image that we had come out of a collective, got thrown out of the Garden of Eden, lived this separatist life where we kept feeling like we were alone. 
And then now we're on the verge of going back into the collective, to waking up in the collective. That's why I say we were not going to leave anybody behind. You know, not part of the collective is going to wake up. Not part of the collective is going to find themselves in, in the Garden of Eden again. It's the collective. And that doesn't mean that it's a hive mentality. It means that every individual knows their individuality. It's like the collective is like an orchestra. Each of us are part of the, 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 the instruments that make up the orchestration. And we play beautiful tunes together. Mm. But we're still separate. And every single one of those frequencies, those tunes, is critical yep. to the overall event. I believe that. That's a good way of describing it, <sighs> the orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. So we are um, we're about 12 minutes out of the show. Um, but this is what's happened to me since we had our last get-together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and um, I just feel so... And you were you were talking earlier about going out into nature and connecting. I went out into the yard and I do live in a in a, a basically a jungle, and I just walked out there and I just opened myself up completely to every frequency that was out there. Just who's here and the joy and the you can't even put it into words what you feel mm-hmm. when you just touch our army. <laughs> Those beings that have always been in, had their feet in the Garden of Eden, except for the watchers that kicked out of there so that they could work with us. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the trees, the roots, they start in the Garden of Eden. And the minerals, you know, they came from the core of the Garden of Eden. We are children of the Garden of Eden. We just have to go back there. Yes, it's a decision, you know. And I hate to tell you, but too many of us have already made the decision to go back. You're on your way, whether you like it or not. (laughs) Because nobody's going to get left behind, and everybody's going, and there's too many that have already made that decision. We wouldn't be this far down the pike of understanding it. That's my opinion. I, I agree with you. Yeah, there's there's too many people that are that are on board. <laughs> what are the what are the, smiling ear to ear, <clears throat> smiling ear to ear? What what are you feeling from the nature spirits? I just feel that they're they're getting so much stronger. There's a new new level of joy. There's definitely a new level of joy that that I haven't. Like I said, my, my horse is, uh, he's my thermometer and, and he's just been incredibly happy. Incredibly happy. It's, it's a peaceful joy. It's not like a blissful elated. It's more like a Oh, present sometimes joy. Like it's I like he's present. absolutely like on. Is October, he really? Okay. October 1st was, yeah. that was a big, big energy day. And I think we talked about the last time. And, um. Oh, yeah. He was like a kid that had too much candy. He, he just, I think like, that's when the shift happened. I think that's yeah, when that's, that big shift we were yeah, all feeling. Because they were working but that now big, he settled big, for it. Balance the energy. And he, he yeah. just was, you know, I looked at him. I said, what do you, what's, what's going on with you? And he, and he was just, he was so excited. He was so excited. Well, supposedly we're going to have another one more big thrust before the end of the calendar year. I don't know when it's going to happen, but there's going to be one more big thrust of energy um, before the end of the year. Well, I know we have a super moon coming up. I think it's I think I read that it's the biggest in. It's on the 14th, I think it's next Monday. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's, it's supposed to be the biggest in, I don't know, years, decades. So that's going to be a powerful day. You do know the moon is a death star, don't you? Apparently, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I like the moon. <laughs> depends on which which part it of the. Depends on who you talk to. I know. 
or it's artificial. I've heard that, but I, I just, I love, I'm fascinated by the moon. Absolutely fascinated. Well, maybe the moon is, is real in the Garden of Eden. Or it's real at, at, at my house in Pennsylvania. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, interestingly enough, I'll be in Philadelphia on that date, on my way back home. I got, I'm going to fly in and out of Philadelphia. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yep, I'm, I'm going to try to make the, uh, well, it's, it, I'm going up to my aunt's house because she's turning to be, I, I think she's 89, maybe 90. I, no, I think I'd know that, 89, I think. And uh, I missed the uh, reunion because Matthew shut down the airport. Where does and your aunt live? Binghamton. So ha- you're driving from Philadelphia to Bing- Binghamton? No, no, I'm flying into Philadelphia, then I'm flying out of Philadelphia to Binghamton. Oh, you are so close. <laughs> oh, you guys should meet her. You are yeah. so close. Really? I'm like I, a half an hour from the Philadelphia airport. Oh, I'm going to be there, I think, three hours on Monday. That's not enough time to oh. get you there and back. Huh? No, I wouldn't be able to go. No, I wouldn't be able to leave the airport. No. No, 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 no. Well, I thought about I thought about stopping by to see you, but um, it, it was like, Mm, not this time. Um, okay. It was like get up there because again we're we're in a in a critical period. Why? I mean when I when I looked at it and did the ticketing and everything, it was I, I it was just this is the date you're going. Okay. And um, now it's like you know something's happening on the 11th, something's happening on the 14th, and I'm like oh this will be fun. <laughs> you know what's happening? I don't know. But. Um, Yes, so we will have some kind of a uh, an energy thing happening over that weekend, next weekend. Well, the two of us in the same proximity, something might blow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and, and Jack there, too, you know. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and there's there's this part, for those people that don't know, that have never been in this part of the world, um, it is... An incredible, all through Pennsylvania, southern New York, and really in that that heart, the heart of Native America. That that you know, the energy there is very powerful, but also very sad, very screwed up. And I have been sent back there on a number of occasions, and this time we've done so much energy work in in that area that I'm hoping this time I go there and find it, you know, that, that that the Garden of Eden is starting to permeate that area. There is just such energy connection. It's one of the vital spots in, in the planet, in my opinion. Well, you know, one of the interesting things that I, I noticed is how strong the energy from the Revolutionary War is in this area. And um, mm. it I... I I worked in a um, office that was right, uh, right by Washington's Crossing, where where General Washington crossed the Delaware on on um, Christmas Day. And once you get into September, when I when I worked at this office, I couldn't figure out why my feet were cold. I, I had to wear like two pairs of socks every single day because my feet were freezing. And I finally realized that it was from it was the the energy residual from the Revolutionary War because it was so cold then. I mean. The, the soldiers, a lot of them didn't have shoes. It was just awful the, what they, how they suffered. And when you, when you go to Valley, I, I'm close to Valley Forge too. That's where the, the, um, the real turning point for the Revolutionary War was. You can see it. My, even my husband who doesn't, you know, to do woo woo stuff, he even comments that once we cross a certain area, all of a sudden you get cold. Even if it's in the middle of the summer, you can feel this cold energy. So that, that winter is still, resonating in that in that area be a lot of trapped spirits there too that never really oh left the you area see, you see them everywhere yeah you really can you can see them you can see them everywhere well and then you can um a friend of mine who lives in, not too far from here she said you can see this this old she lives in a really old house and she said mm-hmm. in the in the in the winter time like around christmas time she said she swears she sees them looking in the window 
the Revolutionary War uh, soldiers. I can so feel them just when yeah, it's, it's yeah. Deb, did you pull a card today? No, I didn't, but I could quickly. I don't know if we have time. I'll do the Earth uh, magic because that seems to go with. Let me just shuffle quick and yank one of the quick version of it. Let's see. I did not pull one before we started, but let me ask now. This is the best card. Oh, there it is. Purification rain. Okay. Gosh. I'm slow it. Now we might not get it out if I can't find it. There it is. Purifying your mind, body, and spirit is a task that is put before you. Purify your mind by identifying a prominent belief you carry about yourself that inhibits you from fully being engaged in life, from showing up 100% of the time. Purify your heart by allowing yourself to breathe in and out blessings and forgiveness so that you can love even more deeply. Let yourself feel your grief, truly feel it, so that the river of your tears become miniature baptisms that heal the wounds in your soul. If necessary, detoxify your body, the temple, and the seat of the soul by changing your diet, doing a cleanse for a few days, or simply drinking more water. Increasing the daily amount of water you drink with deep appreciation for its purpose will revitalize your spirit. It is no wonder that in some indigenous languages, water is called lifeblood as it is so essential to every form of life on earth. Take time to purify yourself. Wow. <laughs> everything, time. it encompassed pretty much everything we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice that you read it at the end. <laughs> the it just up. validated everything that we talked about. <laughs> yep, it sure did. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Wolf Spirit, and all the chatters and everyone listening in that will listen. Thank you. Listen, Jean. Um, you can be con- you can be contacted at jeanrockefeller.com, dot com. Correct. That is correct. And I'm at cosmicreality.net, dot and you can get your shungite for your water, so you don't even have to worry about it. You'll be pure water, energized water, a gift from Gaia, and just take care of the water. Look at the water. Look at nature. Colleen, thank you so very much. Thank you, Colleen, Nancy, and Deb, thank Gabrielle. You. Okay. And we've got um, uh, Emily coming up with um, her hub. Hubby's going to be on with her. So um, thanks, everybody out there. We'll see you next week. And just be safe. Look at the water. Look for the green man. Look at nature. And then let's just get to the garden. Without any more, problems, let's just be beautiful. Good night. Thank Good night, you. everybody. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Good night, everyone. Thank you. You've been listening to Say What on Haggy Shack Radio at HaggyShack.com. Simulcast to Wolf Spirit Radio.